process defined the fundamental unit of computation for the computer and a process is a dynamic entity that is a program in execution what is the meaning of object program the source program it will be converted into object program during program execution three types of scheduling queue one is job queue and ready queue next one is device queue dear students welcome to computer science classes i am ravi kumar kr lecturer in computer science vidyasham first grade college temple of excellence mysore students in this session we are going to talk about the process management that is chapter 2 in this chapter we are going to talk about what is the definition of process process scheduling and operations on process now let us see what is a process and process management so what is a process a process let us a definition of this it is a sequential program in execution a process define the fundamental unit of computation for the computer and a process is a dynamic entity that is a program in execution now all of you know that we are using computer for data processing that is nothing but execution of a program so execution of a program is nothing but a process so that is the reason we say it is the fundamental unit of computation and definition is it is a sequential program in execution or we can say the program in execution is nothing but a process it is another definition is a, it is a sequence of instruction executions process exists in a limited span of time so what is the meaning of limited span of time here any process it has its own limit here simple example if i say i want to write a program for addition of two numbers so how long it takes for computation hardly it takes few seconds so that is the limited span of time so within that time the process will be executed and the two or more process could be executing the same program each using their data and resources so this is the meaning of process management if there are more than two process if i say i mean if there are one task or you can say second task or third task or if you talk about multitasking example or we say it is a multi processing if i say multi processing the concept here is there are two or more process will be executing simultaneously so here it will be executing the same program and each using their own data and resources so here for example the program 1 or you say the process 1 the process 1 will be having its own data and it will be using its its separate io devices or utilization of io de devices similarly process 2 and process 3 for example it will be using their own data for processing and again find its use its own resources so this is the the concept of process management now in the next slide we will see what are the components of the process so here first one is object program and that is code to be executed so you know what is the meaning of object program the source program it will be converted into object program during program execution so this is object program and data this is used for executing the program so if you want to process the data or execute the program data has to be given that's a data and resources so if i say resources it can be hardware or software resources so it has to make use of different resources and status of the process so it is used for verifying the status of the process so if i say status of the process whether which says that the process is running or process is not running or it will be in halt state these are the different components of a process in the next slide we will see what are all the different process state so here it is defined as the current activity of the process so when process execute it changes its state so i mean the computer or the processor it will be identified by its states so look at the example here we have different process state 
one is new this is a new the process that has just been created so here the concept here is the process has to be created it will be executed so this is new is the state it means that it just process will be created ready the ready process are waiting to have the processor allocated them by the OS so that they can run here the microprocessor has to allot its, its time for particular process I mean the ready state is means it is a process waiting for processor time like running the process that is currently being executed it is in process or is running waiting so here the, that cannot execute until some event occurs such as completion of an IO operation so here it is a process waiting for computer resources for example IO operations next terminated see this is a terminated a process that has been released from the pool of executable process by the operating system see once the process has been completed then it has to be terminated here first step is we have to create the process that particular process has to be terminated at one point of time see these are all different state of process in the next slide we will see what is pcb or process control block so here each process contain process control block that is pcb is the data structure used by the operating system so this is the structure of pcb and here you can see the pointers and process state so this is what you have seen in the previous slide it can be any of one of the state process number program counter cpu register memory allocation event information and list of open file see these are the components of your pcb or process control block next concept is process scheduling so what is process scheduling it is the activity of the process manager that handles the removal of the running process from the cpu and selection of another process on the basis of the particular strategy so what is the meaning of this here as we have seen in our previous slide if there are more than one process to be executed or running in that case all the process or will be in a pool or in a queue so here this the process scheduling is the concept that the process manager the process manager handles the removal of the running process from the CPU I mean the process manager handles by removing the process from the CPU and allocates time for other processor ready to be executed I mean those processes are will be in a queue see this is the meaning of a concept of process scheduling and here process scheduling queues so here the OS maintain all PCB in process scheduling queue that's what I told you just now here all the process to be executed if there are more than one process it will be in a queue it maintains a separate queue for each of the process states and PCB of all process in the same execution state are placed in the same queue see this is how the process scheduling takes place here OS the responsibility of OS is to maintain the the responsibility of operating system is to maintain the, all the PCBs or the process of scheduling a queue this is process scheduling here the OS maintain three important process scheduling queues here there are three types of scheduling queue one is job queue and ready queue next one is device queue so what is job queue here this queue keeps all the process in the system so this is the first queue job queue it is going to keep maybe it's going to store all the process of the computer system now ready queue this queue keeps set off all the process residing in the main memory ready and waiting for execution a new process is always put in this queue so this is the ready queue so here it contains a process it will be ready to be executed and device queue the processes which are blocked 
due to unavailability of an IO devices constitute this queue. What is device queue? So here, if there are more than one process in a queue and here the all the process may not get the resources like IO devices or some other devices for execution. So in that case, so the few processes will be blocked because of unavailability of the IO devices and those type of processor are in a list that is called or in a queue that is a device queue. In the next slide, we we'll see schedulers. See what are schedulers and here the process the process migrates among the various scheduling queues throughout its lifetime the selection process is carried out by appropriate scheduler so here the one more concept is schedulers means the process migrates among various scheduling queues we have seen in the previous slide scheduling the a process schedulers so in that case so it is moving from one to another schedule based on some appropriate scheduler. So there are three types of schedulers. One is short term scheduler that is another name is called CPU scheduler. Long term scheduler it is called job scheduler and medium term scheduler. See these are all different types of schedulers. In the next slide we will see what are CPU scheduling. So in multi-programming systems, the operating system schedules the process on the CPU to have the maximum utilization of it and this procedure is called CPU scheduling. So what is the meaning of CPU scheduling? The operating system, it keeps the CPU or utilization of CPU to the maximum extent. That is the concept of CPU scheduling. So the OS uses various scheduling algorithm to schedule the process. CPU scheduling, the concept here is the operating system, it, it keeps the CPU busy or it looks into the maximum utilization of CPU, that is CPU scheduling. There are types of scheduling algorithm. So one is preemptive scheduling. And next one is non-preemptive scheduling. So in preemptive scheduling, it is used when a process switches from running state to ready state or from waiting state to the ready state. So what is preemptive scheduling? Here, the process is switch over from one to another, like from running state to ready state or from waiting state to ready state. This is the definition of preemptive scheduling. Next one is non-preemptive scheduling. Here, when the process terminates, when a process switches from running state to waiting state. See here also another type of scheduling is called non-preemptive. Here, the process when terminates or switches from running state to waiting state. So these are our two different types of scheduling algorithm. Now let us see what are all different types under preemptive scheduling. So here preemptive scheduling, one is priority scheduling, shortest remaining job first, longest remaining job first and round robin scheduling. See these are all different types of scheduling. Under non-preemptive scheduling, first come first serve, shortest job first, longest job first, highest response ratio next. See, these are all different scheduling under non-preemptive scheduling. In the first come first serve algorithm, it is the simplest all scheduling algorithm where CPU is allocated to the process in the order of arrival. So whichever the process is first in the queue, that will be given the priority. I mean the CPU time will be allotted to the first processor or first process in a queue. That is first come first served algorithm. Second one is short term first scheduling. Here it associates with each process the length of the letters next CPU burst. The process which takes the less time for execution that is shortest job first scheduling. Here the amount of time the process required to complete the process is referred as bus time. So this is the bus time here. So based on this it will be executed. 
now this is another one next one is priority scheduling so what is priority scheduling here see allocated to the cpu time is allocated to the highest priority of the process from the ready queue so ready queue we know the state of the process in the previous slides so the cpu time will be allocated to the process which are in the ready queue see these are all different types of scheduling algorithm next one is round robin scheduling another type of scheduling here the time sharing system use the round robin algorithm time sharing system so here use of small quantum allows round robin to provide good response time and in round robin scheduling cpu select the process from the ready queue so it is also select the process from the ready queue a ready queue where the process are ready to be executed so the implement of all our scheduling ready queue maintained as a fifo queue of the process that is first in first out there the concept is what is the queue here FIFO stands for first in, first out queue of the process. And the CPU scheduler picks the first process from the ready queue and sets a time to interrupt after one time quantum and dispatches at the process. So this is how the round robin algorithm or this is round robin scheduling. In the next slide, we will see multi processor scheduling see what we have seen in the previous slide it is process management or process scheduling now next concept is multi processor scheduling so here the multi processor scheduling more than one processor or cpu share the load of the load to handle execution of the processes smoothly the multiple cpu in the system share a common bus memory and other io devices so this is one of the function of operating system that is multi processor operating system or here multi processor scheduling so what is the concept of multi processor here a system or a computer system will be having more than one processor so in that case the cpu or one processor or uh, share the more than one processor share the load load or uh, to handle execution of the processes smoothly so it is advantages of having more number of processor so that a process will be executed smoothly and here the multiple cpu the multiple cpu in the sense it is processor in the system shares a common bus memory and other io devices this is multi processor scheduling and here there are two approaches to multiple processor scheduling one is symmetric multi processing so in simulating multi processor scheduling the processors are self scheduling so the scheduler of each processor checks the ready queue and select the process to be executed so in symmetric multi processing it select the processor from the ready queue in symmetric multi processing a single copy of the operating system is maintained which is used by all the processor shared io devices bus and memory see this is what you have seen in the previous slide here the processes waiting for cpu to get executed are maintained in a global ready queue and the processes from the global ready queue are evenly distributed among processors local queue so as to balance the workload so here the processes which are in a ready queue it will be distributed among multiple processors in a system so example of windows xp linux and mac os etc these are all example for multi processor system or operating system again in asymmetric multi processing another type of multi processor scheduling here there is a master server and the rest of them are slave server so there are two concepts here one is master server and slave servers here the master server handles all the scheduling processes and io processes and slave servers handle the user processors so there are two separate concept here one is to handle the users processes 
and second one is to handle the cpu processors if the master server goes down the whole system comes to halt so because it everything is depends on the server system so in the server concept if the server goes down the master server goes down the entire system will be halt however if one of the slave servers goes down the rest of the system keeps working obviously so this is the procedure this is asymmetric multi processing scheduling next concept is thread scheduling so here these are all different methods of thread scheduling here so here one is load sharing thread scheduling so here the process are not assigned to a particular processor and a global queue of ready thread is maintained and each processor when idle select the thread from the queue now what we have seen so far is the process ready to be executed will be in a ready queue so in load sharing scheduling here the, in this type of thread scheduling here so here the processor not assigned to a particular processor so here the process it has to be allotted by a particular processor so that is not assigned here in that case process in the ready queue will be executed next three different versions of load sharing and here one is first come first served second one is smallest number of thread and here the shared ready queue is organized as a priority given a thread from the job with the smallest number of unscheduled threads that is the definition of smallest number of threads and preemptive smallest number of thread first say this preemptive smallest number of thread for this is another category here so highest priority is given to the jobs with the smallest number of incomplete threads see these are all different types of load sharing next one is advantage of load sharing here the load is distributed evenly across the processor one concept here and no centralized scheduler is required for this the global queue can be organized that is global ready queue can be organized what's the drawback of this here the preempted threads are unlikely to resume execution on the same processor this is the drawback of this or drawbacks or disadvantages of load sharing in the next slide we will see what is real time scheduling so here the system carry real time task are known as real time scheduling and here you know what is the meaning real time operating system or real time operations so i have given example of weather forecasting weather forecasting is an application of real time environment so here these tasks need to be performed immediately when certain degree of urgency and what is the meaning of this as we have seen in real time operations or examples so the computer system or cpu it accepts a continuous flow of inputs and it is going to execute the same thing immediately continuously so here that is the concept of real time operations or scheduling here so the real time task or jobs or the task associated with quantitative expression of time this quantitative expression of time describes the behavior of the real time task all the real time task need to be completed the deadline i mean it has to be so in real time our scheduling system or operating system the particular job it has to be executed within a given amount of time so suppose if the system don't get a proper response from the io devices so in that case the particular process will be halt it will not continue again that is the concept of real time scheduling some examples of real time system or examples control of laboratory experiment process control in industrial plants in a, i mean in the manufacturing unit automobile industry robotics and air traffic control telecommunication system and military command and control system so these are examples of real time operations or real time systems next what are the features of real time operating system so here fast context switch ability to respond to external interrupts quickly 
use of special sequential files that can be accumulate data at a fast rate and multitasking with interprocess communication that is ipc tools preemptive scheduling based on priority special alarms and timeouts minimization of interval during which interrupts are disabled these are all the features of real time operating system in the next concept we would say what are context switching here so here the context switching is a technique where or a method used by operating system to switch a process from one state to another state to execute its function using cpus in the system so what is the concept here is the context switching is is nothing but switching a process from one state to another state at the beginning we have seen the different state of process so that is the concept of context switching switching from the process from one state to another state and here when switching perform in the system it stores the whole running process status in the form of registers and assigns a cpu to a new process to execute its task and the context switch time is pure overload and context switching can significantly affect performance since the modern computers have lots of general and status registers to be saved so this is context switching next concept is operations on processes so several operations are possible on the process so process must be created and deleted dynamically and os must provide the environment for the process operation so this is another important uh, applications of or functions of operating system that is operations of process so here there are two major operations one is creating a process and terminate a process first one is create a process so what is the meaning of create a process here the operating system creates a new process with the specified default attributes and identifier the process may create a several new sub processes the creating process is called parent process and the new sub processes are called children of that process each of these new process may in turn create another process forming a tree of process so this is creating a process so any process has to be executed it has to be created and this is the concept of creating a new process and with the default attributes or with the we have to follow the syntax of it so with the help of this a new process will be created and in turn it is going to create another sub process and you hear the concept of parent process and children it is a child process or children process or to be created from the new process so this is the concept of creating a process and this is the syntax of creating a process next one is terminate a process here the process terminates when it finishes executing and ask the operating system to delete it by using the exit system call so this is the meaning of terminate when the process is completed its task or it is completed then it has to be removed from the cpu or from the memory by using a different system call so this is the concept of terminate a process all the resources of the process including physical and virtual memory open files and io buffers are deallocated by the operating system so once the process has been terminated so the resources which were used by the particular process will be deallocated by the os so this is the concept of terminating a process next concept is inter process communication that is nothing but ipc inter process communication so it means that the process to communicate with each other while they are running so another concept is inter process communication so if there are more than one process are executing or running in a system and all these different process all communicating among themselves that is a concept of 
inter process communication so it allow process to synchronize their action without sharing the same address space and is particularly useful in distributed environment where communicating process may reside on different computers connected with a network so this is the concept of inter process communication it is possible even in computer network and here there are two fundamental models of ipc the one is message passing second one is shared memory system these are the two models so what is the message passing here in the message passing model the communication takes place by means of message exchange between the cooperating process so i mean by passing the messages it is going to communicate that is message passing and it is useful for exchange of smaller amounts of data because no conflicts need to be avoided here so this is advantage of message passing and it is possible to share a small amount of data so message passing is also easier to implement in a distributed system than shared memory system so this is message passing next one is shared memory systems so shared memory region resides in the address space of the process creating the shared memory segment so if you look at this diagram here see this is a process a process b and this is a message q and it's a kernel and process a process b this is a shared memory so this is what here shared memory region resides in the address space of the process creating the shared memory segment other process that wish to communicate using this shared memory segment must attach it to the address space here now they can exchange the information by reading and writing data in the shared areas and the process are also responsible for ensuring that they are not writing to the same location simultaneously so look at the diagram here see this is what we are talking about shared memory location any process to be exchange the information data it has to be in the shared memory or it has to attach to the shared memory space so this is the concept of shared memory system student in this session we have discussed about the process management in detail now in the next session we are going to talk about cpu scheduling thank you so much